When you think of a hybrid gas electric vehicle, it's really hard to beat the Toyota Prius. This model here is the OG. In fact, if you were to Google the term hybrid on your smartphone or desktop, there's a pretty good chance that this vehicle's predecessor will show up in the search results. Now, Toyota really shocked the industry when they introduced the transformative redesign that was the 2023 Prius. I already had a chance to show you guys a full review on the regular Prius in front wheel drive. However, this week, as you can see, Toyota has loaned me the ultimate ultimate Prius in the form of the 2023 Prius Prime XSE Premium. As you guys know, Prime means this is a plug-in hybrid vehicle, so it has characteristics of a full electric car as well as, as a gas car and with up to 220 horsepower under the hood and up to 44 miles of electric-only range. This is, without a doubt, the ultimate Prius in terms of specifications. So this week, as you can see, we're gonna live with this cutting edge Prius Prime XSE Premium. We're gonna put it through our usual battery of tests. We're gonna range test it. And at the end of this video, we're gonna find out, has Toyota managed to successfully create a vehicle that is the perfect compromise between gas and electric? Stay tuned to find out. So the Toyota Prius got a full redesign for 2023, but before we start talking about its stunning new style, let's go ahead and pop the hood of this Prime version because as you guys know, the Prime means we have the most powerful engine ever put in a production Prius. Now, as part of the fifth generation Prius, this has the latest version of Toyota's hybrid system. In fact, the hybrid drivetrain of this model has been significantly beefed up thanks to a larger 13.6 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it combines a larger two liter naturally aspirated dynamic force direct injection four cylinder that runs on the Atkinson cycle. It, deliver, it delivers 150 horsepower on its own. That's a pretty big 60-ish horsepower increase versus the gas engine in the previous generation. Now it's augmented by two electric motors. There's two at the front. The Prime sadly does not offer all wheel drive because of the electric traction battery that's underneath the rear seat. That takes up space that would have given us room for the all wheel drive uh, electric motor that you can get in the regular Prius. Now, uh, the electric motor on its own delivers 161 horsepower. That's an extra 50 horsepower over the regular Prius. And combined, Toyota says you get around 220 horsepower. Uh, that's around 26 more ponies versus the regular Prius front wheel drive, around 24 more versus the all wheel drive of the non-prime version of the Prius. It all goes out through an eCVT, a continuously variable transmission. And like I said earlier, front wheel drive is your only option on the prime. Now, fuel economy, if you guys run it in hybrid, mode is rated at 50 in the city, 47 on the highway, about 48 miles per gallon combined. The MPG E figure is like around 114. That number doesn't really mean much. It's the number that you're going to get. What the EPA says is the equivalent when you run it in electric and hybrid mode combined. Toyota says that the EPA rating for this model with the bigger wheels is 38 miles on a full charge. We'll test that out in the real world uh, when we live this vehicle for a full week. Toyota also claims zero to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds, which again is about a half a second faster than the regular Prius. We'll test it out in the real world using our testing equipment. Uh, and in terms of the curb weight, this model here is a tick over 3,500 pounds. It's around 200 pounds heavier versus the regular Prius thanks to that larger, heavier battery pack. But closing the hood, this exterior color that I'm showing you is called Cutting Edge Metallic. It is a silver exterior. It's a new color for 2023. And you can see it's also a free color. I wouldn't personally pick silver on the new Prius. However, this design certainly stands out in a really great way. Toyota really went all out in making a sexy Prius. And you can immediately tell by looking at the front end. Just take a look at the sculpted edges on the hood. These new kind of C-shaped wide full LED headlights, which some say resembles a Ferrari. Um, uh, which I think is a little bit of a stretch, but it definitely looks great. You can see it has a C-shaped LED daytime running light and turn signal, full LED low and high beams. There's an LED accent light there and down here, no LED fog lights. And then you can see it is still, it still has a gas engine. So there is still a little slit here that allows air to kind of cool the gas engine along with uh, some lower intakes down here. There's some silver painted along with black painted accents, some nicely inserted parking sensor. If I one, if I want to ding one thing about the new Prius is, is the front bumper here. I don't like how there's a built-in front license plate bracket, which is you know good for states who require it, but here in PA, you don't have to have a front license plate, so that 
part there just kind of looks like an afterthought. There's also a front camera that's mounted over here along with the sensor for the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. You can see it includes a radar, cam uh, radar sensor and camera up there along with the parking sensors. But overall, this car still turns a lot of heads. I mean, in fact, just my week's worth of testing, everywhere I took it, people were seriously just checking out and doing a double take on this Prius because people can hardly believe that it is a Prius. Now, moving around the side profile at 181 inches long, this is a little bit longer versus the prior generation. It has a wheelbase of 108 uh, inches long. Uh, really, what's so shocking about this car is the swept back windshield. Toyota says that this is actually steeper in rake versus their old LFA supercar, and it also contributes to a 0.27 coefficient of drag with this model here uh, because we have the slightly less aerodynamic wheels. These are the 19-inch wheels that you get standard on the XSE trims and up. Uh, the, they are two-tone machine finish. You'll get a 17-inch wheel with hubcaps, but it's an alloy with a... Uh, aerodynamic cover on the XSE. That's the one that'll give you up to 44 miles of range. You can see it has a really skinny 195 by 50 R19 uh, tire. Uh, these tires are economy minded. You have a 12 inch rotor at the front, an 11 inch rotor at the back, all disc brakes along with an independent suspension system. You can see the Prius Prime also includes these black painted wheel arches uh, and you have uh, just just over five inches of ground clearance. So again, this is not an SUV, which I really appreciate. You can see the side mirrors. These are not power folding. Toyota also didn't include uh, any kind of integrated turn signal, which would have been nice. You can see the roof line of this car is much lower. The car itself is about an inch, uh, an inch and a half wider and like two inches lower than the prior generation. And my tester, you can see, has the optional solar roof. This is for $610. It's only available on the uh, XSE premium trim. Toyota says you can roughly add between two to four miles of range when you have it sitting in direct sunlight for up to eight hours a day. That actually is range that it puts back into the traction battery and it also helps to power the electronics when you're driving the vehicle out on a sunny day. It does remove of course the glass roof which didn't open to let air in and only open to let light in but you can see it's a really cool option to have and it's a pretty cheap option at $610 although it's only available on this high trim. You can see the rear door. Uh, cleverly, Toyota hid the rear handles back here to kind of give it more of a coupe-like profile. Uh, and then you can see on this side, you'll find the charge port door. Now you can see, open that up, you have the standard J1772 plug. There's no DC fast charger on this vehicle. Toyota says they equipped it with a three and a half kilowatt level two onboard charger. So it basically means it'll take about four hours for this vehicle to fully charge on a level two, 11 hours if you have it on a level one outlet, which is how most people are probably going to charge their plug-in hybrid vehicles. Looking at the rear, you can see the latest Toyota design language here. The vehicle looks low and wide, which is great. You have that full length LED light bar. You can see there's a prime badge here, Toyota's new Beyond Zero badge, along with an XSE badge. I love how it's a full LED taillight design. No visible exhaust tips or anything like that. The XSE premium trim also includes a rear power gate. Uh, it's definitely a cool premium touch. And then when you open up the cargo area, the sleeker shape of the Prius did also reduce the cargo capacity. You have a total of 20.3 cubic feet of storage space back here, which is a reduction of around five cubic feet from the prior generation. There is a little bit of storage underneath here for the mobile charger. It has just a fix a flat kit with an air compressor. You can fold down those seats, but Toyota does not quote what the actual space is when you have the seats folded. I'd estimate it'd probably be uh, just under 40 cubic feet uh, if you have all the seats folded down. So once you're done drooling over the sexy new style of the new Prius, let's go ahead and hop inside the interior because this is where you're gonna be spending most of your time. Now, before we get inside, you can see here is the current uh, key fob for the Prius Prime. You can even see it has a unique badge here to show you that you have the Prime version of the Prius. This is, of course, Toyota's smart key access system uh, with all the usual buttons for lock, unlock, power lift gate, which is only on the premium trim, and a panic function. There's also a digital key function where you can use your phone as a key, which is a great feature, and and the Prius has a new lock and unlock chime. Just check this out. Definitely like that sound more than the usual beep. I'm not sure if that's gonna make it onto other Toyota models. There is also remote start on the fob. If you push uh, the lock button three times in sequence and then hold it on the third time, that will actually remote start the car from the fob, or you can also do it through your smartphone if you have access to the connected services app. Now you can see, I like how Toyota didn't decide to go with a weird pop-out door handle. It's got a traditional door handle. Touch the back of it, that unlocks the door. Touch that little ridge area there, that will lock the door for you. There is no walk away auto lock or unlock feature. Toyota sadly does not do that like you can find in some other manufacturers. Now looking at the interior, you can see on the Prime, I hope you guys like a black interior with red accents because Toyota sadly does not offer any different colors like you can get in the regular Prius where you can get like a beige or a black interior. 
or it's actually technically a gray. The XSE trims and up come with the Softex interior, which includes heated seats. The premium package uh, adds ventilated seats. So you have heated and cooled front seats on a Prius, which is great. You also have an eight-way power driver's seat here with two-way lumbar, and the premium package also includes two-person memory. So again, there's a reason why you wanna spend that extra coin to go for the premium package. In terms of the door panels, you can see it's got a soft touch injection molded plastic, silver painted door handle, accents here padded where you'd rest your elbow, a nice little phone storage area here, uh, and you can see the window controls. Uh, they are all illuminated and they're one touch for all four and they feel relatively high quality. You have some additional storage down here, hard touch plastic materials. And then my tester also has the eight speaker JBL sound system. Highly would recommend that if you guys are an audiophile because again, you'll be driving this vehicle mostly in electric only mode. Now getting inside, you can see the low step in height and the lower roof contributes to you having to duck your head when you first get into this vehicle. But once you do, it definitely has a higher tech futuristic vibe to it. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. It's not quite as nice sounding as some other vehicles I've been in, but overall it's pleasant. You can see starting it up, the start stop button is right here. It's not blocked by the steering wheel, uh, thankfully, but you can see once I turn the vehicle on, it has the newest Toyota Chime, and then you're greeted with uh, the latest version of Toyota's audio multimedia interface. Now, if you guys go for an XSE or an SE trim, you'll actually get a smaller eight inch display. The XSE is available with the 12.3. It's standard, of course, on the XSE premium. You also have a seven inch LCD cluster over here. This essentially was taken directly off the Toyota BZ4X, the busy forks, at least that's what Alex on autos likes to call it. Uh, and the steering wheel as well. Not my favorite steering wheel. I kind of wish Toyota had used a different wheel for the Prime, uh, but you can see it's an electric power steering assist. It has manual tilt and telescoping. You're gonna be finding yourself adjusting the wheel on a lower end mostly because if you have it too high, you can see it blocks the view of the instrument panel over here. So I have it set a little bit lower than I would, which I got used to pretty quick. This right here is the sensor for the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which watches your face and tells you if you're paying attention or not because it includes traffic jam assist at speeds below 25 miles an hour, it'll actually go hands-free in, in uh, traffic in those conditions, which is nice. That screen over there is slightly customizable. You can kind of push this button right here. You can make it kind of, again, a bigger circular dial, or you can move over to the side where you can show all your different information. The eco button here, or the eco information shows some great info on EV driving ratio, power generator from the solar roof, um, your miles per kilowatt or miles per gallon. And if you scroll down here, you can see your, you can see the uh, Toyota Safety Sense, you can pull up your audio information. There's your energy monitor, which also can show your tire pressure and your trip information. Um, the graphics also look pretty good. You can even go into a setting here, push and hold that when the vehicle is stopped. You can actually adjust your driver assistance stuff, of course, uh, and you can also uh, make a few changes. For example, here I can go into this setting here. I can change the meter type, which I didn't realize, which only allows you to turn the hybrid system on or off. So it's not quite as customizable as I've seen some newer Toyotas. But again, this is all fairly high tech stuff, and I like the way this looks as well. It's certainly looks a lot more futuristic. The downside, of course, there's a lot of hard touch plastic materials over on this area. It's nice and padded, at least over here. I love how there's also the, some red accented uh, trim with red accent interior lighting that you'll find kind of going across the entire dash, even on this little portion uh, bes or below the driver's seat vent or the driver's side vent. The color is red comp compared to the blue that you find in the regular Prius. There's also a Prius badge here. And then this is the 12.3 inch display. You can see it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's quick and snappy and responsive. It has over the air updates. So I put it into reverse. You can see there's your backup camera and a full 360 camera. That's part of an advanced tech package that my tester has for like an additional uh, thousand bucks. Uh, but you can see the high resolution display looks fine. It also has parking sensors. It also has automatic parallel parking, which is included if you guys go for that advanced tech package, as you guys know. Um, go back to the Toyota display here. You can see it includes embedded GPS, which is a cloud-based system. All your usual functions are there to the side. So this right here is easy to use. It's one of my favorite in the industry for the mainstream segment. So Toyota did a really good job there. Uh, you can see there's single zone automatic climate control. You have heated and cooled seats along with um, a heated wheel, which is also available. The button is over here. It's only on this higher trim, uh, which is nice in the winter time. Uh, it doesn't have that knee warmer that you can get on the BZ4X, but again, that's there because it's an all electric vehicle. Uh, and then over here, you can see there's a nice storage area 
uh, two USB charging ports, uh, and then a really cool hidden compartment underneath there. It even says hashtag hidden compartment. Some piano black plastic trim, and then this right here controls the CVT. Push it all the way over there to go to neutral, kick it up to go to reverse, back down to go to drive. There's also a B mode that gives you regenerative braking uh, with three different levels, although I couldn't figure out how to adjust the actual levels. No paddles on the wheel to actually control that. Your wireless smartphone charger is right here. You can see my iPhone 14 Pro Max fits very nicely in there, although it didn't always reliably charge the car consistently. You can see you have different drive modes here from an auto EV, HV mode, uh, an hybrid and an EV mode. You can also push and hold that to go into a charge mode, electronic parking brake, and then your drive mode selector. There's four of them. There's eco, normal, sport, and then custom, where you can kind of customize the drive settings here. Although this car doesn't have adaptive dampers, so you can only adjust the powertrain, the steering, and the air conditioning. So most of the times, you'll probably be driving this vehicle in either normal or eco mode. This center console lid, I could be more padded. I noticed when I was resting my elbows here, it kind of just goes straight through into a hard area, which I don't like. Open that up, you can see there's two more USB charging ports, USB-C charging ports. It's a little bit shallow, but it's decent. The seats are uh, pretty nice. I like the soft text. It's comfortable, it's supportive. Uh, it doesn't really have aggressive bolstering, but the heated and cooled seat function works really well, specifically the cooled function. Uh, the glove compartment, you can see it's a bin style. It's damped, but not only to fell. It's actually pretty big. There's a good amount of storage. Uh, the uh, digital camera review mirror you can see is a must, especially when you look at, at the rear view, it doesn't really have a great view. So this really fixes that. It's part of a $200 upcharge on only the premium trim. So highly recommend that if you guys are gonna go all in on the highest trim. But overall, you can see the interior space definitely feels a little bit less airy versus the prior generation. You kind of have to get used to this really expansive dash, but I love the fact that Toyota uh, gave us an actual gauge cluster. They have a really great infotainment system. The materials are solid, not luxury, but they're uh, relatively you know, good considering the price and the build quality seems fine. Uh, but overall, uh, it's definitely a nice place to spend time. Let me go ahead and hop into the back seat of the Prius Prime. And this is where, again, you're gonna be noticing the old model was more uh, practical in that regard because of that sloping rear roof. Now, first of all, the materials back here are hard touch plastic. It is padded right there where you'd rest your elbow. And then when I get in here, you can see I am not very tall, but as you can see, guys, let me show you. I literally have to duck my head so bad here because you will smack your head on that pretty bad if you're not paying attention. But headroom space, once I'm back here at five foot seven, is fine. I can rest my head toward on the headrest and it doesn't actually, my hair doesn't touch the ceiling. But if you're over six feet tall, this is gonna be a problem. Uh, as I get in and shut the door, the door has a similar, somewhat solid sounding thunk, but you can see legroom here, Toyota says is just over 35 inches, which is fine, but the Kia Nero um, has around four more inches of legroom. That's this car's main competitor, so kind of keep that in mind. There is one storage co uh, compartment here. Uh, you have no rear seat air vents, which I wish it did at this price point. You have heated rear seats, just one level. That's part of an option package. You have two USB-C charging ports, an actual, uh, power outlet, a 120 power outlet, which is nice. The seats themselves, they do, again, fold down to kind of get, expand the cargo area, and it still actually kind of gives you a flat floor. Remember, the battery lives underneath this rear seat here, um, but thankfully, you don't lose any space, but when you fold down the armrest here, you can see there's two cup holders, uh, which is nice, but overall, the back seat area is definitely a little bit tighter compared to the prior generation, but again, if you need more space, Toyota will happily sell you a RAV4 hybrid, or you can also take a look at this car's main rival, the Kia Nero hybrid, which does have around four more inches of legroom. So here we are back in the ultimate Prius, the Prius Prime. Now I consider this new generation Prius to likely be the most transformative redesign in automotive history, at least for this year, uh, for the model year 2023, because I already had a chance to drive the regular Prius for a full week, the Prius Limited and front wheel drive, really likes that car uh, on a daily basis in just everyday driving. It is without a doubt, probably the perfect daily driver for the majority of people out there, especially when you consider the price point that the Prius plays under. It's not a super expensive car like some of these other brand new cars can be. So the Prime is the model that essentially gives you, you know, the best of both worlds, up to 38 or up to 44 miles of electric only range. This model here is rated at 38. We are starting with a full charge here with the air conditioning on it says it's has about 32 miles of range, 35 if I turn off the AC, but I did manage to actually test out the range in the real world, and I'll talk about that later in the driving scene. But Toyota says this is also the quickest accelerating Prius ever because we have 220 horsepower. Sadly, the Prime is only available with front wheel drive because there's not enough space for the rear drive shaft 
in the Prime because the battery pack takes up that room. But let's go ahead and see what we can get here with a full charge, it's in sport mode. I have it in hybrid mode. That's gonna give us the maximum or quickest acceleration time. And we'll go ahead and break torque it here and we'll see what we can get. I'm also gonna turn off the traction control. Feels really good off the line. Whew. 6.48 seconds there. That's about 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds faster than what I got with this car out in California. So again, we're talking about a Toyota Prius that can sprint to 60 in six and a half seconds, under six and a half seconds. I mean, this car will smoke a Civic Si, which is just kind of funny to think about considering the fact that it's a Prius. It's always been the butt of, you know, the ugly duckling kind of like crunchy granola. It's a greenies car. It's not fast. I mean, the old Prius took around 10 and a half seconds to get to 60. So Toyota has increased the performance of this car or decreased the speed of this car by four seconds in terms of zero to 60. That is it's just absolutely bonkers to think about. Uh, and it really shows you how Toyota's hybrid technology uh, is really, you know, kind of up there with the rest of the segment leaders. Let's try it again here. This time I won't brake torque it, I'll just floor it. Six point eight eight there, and this is with it more going slightly uphill. So this car is just crazy how quick it is. I mean, in real world testing, you'll be able to do a sub seven, seven seconds, zero to 60 time. And it's about a half a second faster versus the Prius Limited with front wheel drive that I tested. So for those of you who are wondering, is the Prime faster than the regular Prius with the bigger battery pack and the extra 50 horsepower that you get from the electric motor alone? Absolutely. I mean, in total, this car only has about 30-ish more horsepower, like 26 more horsepower uh, versus the regular Prius. But it's going to make a difference. It's just sad that Toyota doesn't offer all wheel drive. Now, in sport mode in this vehicle, you definitely notice this car, first of all, has very aggressive throttle response. It, it changes the throttle mapping in this mode and you just put your foot down, you feel the electric motor torque, you feel the gas engine giving that extra power. And this car just pushes you back in the seat with all of that instantaneous torque, uh, which is nice. But the beauty about the Prime is unlike the regular Prius, I can actually put it into EV mode here. Uh, and the car will drive basically like an electric car. And that's kind of the beauty about going with the Prime. You have that additional larger battery pack. You have 161 horsepower on its own from just the electric motor. That's 50 more horsepower than what you get in the regular Prius. And this car in this mode, if I put my foot down, it's it feels and sounds like an electric car. And that's kind of the cool thing about the Prius Prime is you can drive this vehicle around town in full electric mode at speeds up to 84 miles an hour. Once you go past 84 miles an hour, uh, it'll switch automatically to hybrid mode to give you the extra power that you need to maintain that momentum. But even in this mode, the tires are screeching because of all that torque and it's quiet. It just has that electric motor whirring noise that I like about full EVs. It also feels quick, it feels light, it feels playful, and it just feels like a car that is fun, futuristic, and just efficient. That's, you know, if you drive mostly around town, you're gonna wanna drive it in EV mode. And this is where the Prius Prime, you know, gives you that best of both worlds because you have that electric only driving range. It feels a lot like the RAV4 Prime, which to me, when I owned that vehicle for a year, it was just a, a great car to drive. But let's go ahead and try zero to 60 in just EV mode here. My foot is all the way to the floor, but the car is able to accelerate in just electric only. It's definitely noticeably slower. Um, let's see if I can actually get to 60 here. 10.25 seconds there in just EV mode to get to 60. So yes, it is noticeably slower. It, it slows it down to, actually, if you look at the time of the zero to 60 for this car in pure EV mode, it's actually still quicker than the old Prius Prime when it was in hybrid mode. So that just shows you how fast the EV mode is on its own. I mean, this is still sufficient power in day-to-day -day driving where you don't necessarily need the hybrid drivetrain. You don't need the gas engine to come on because the car has instant thr throttle response. It has instant torque. It feels fast enough, in, fast enough in everyday driving. And really, where you're only gonna want the extra power of the gas engine is on the highway. Toyota actually even recommends when you're in 
uh, when you're driving above 65 miles an hour, you should switch the drive mode to hybrid mode uh, because it's going to give you, again, better efficiency in hybrid mode. The gas engine is just more efficient on the highway. Electric motors are more efficient around town. That's how hybrids and ele electric vehicles have always worked. So it kind of shows you uh, just how Toyota has really captured the best of both worlds. And the other cool thing is, is if you guys don't want to charge this vehicle up by plugging it in, there's also a charge mode here. If you push and hold this button here, it'll switch it to the charge mode. However, the charge mode is really inefficient. It makes the gas engine's fuel efficiency drop and it'll only allow it to charge up to 80% in charge mode. So if you wanna get a full charge on the traction battery, uh, you have to actually plug it in. Uh, the other cool thing my tester has is the solar roof. Now, if you go to this little screen here, it'll actually show you the solar roof and how much power is generated. Right now it says, since I've been driving, we've generated 0.4 miles uh, of range. This actually puts range into the traction battery to give you range to drive home in. Now, Toyota says on a sunny day in eight hours of sun, you could theoretically add between two to four miles of range. Uh, as you can see, it is cloudy right now in Pennsylvania. I haven't had a chance to really test that out yet, um, but I have had some colleagues tell me that they have in more sunny conditions. So if you guys live in an area where it's more sunny, like if you're in Florida or California, the solar roof may be a nice worthy option. Here in the PA area, we tend, we tend to have a lot of clouds and thunderstorms around this time of the year in the summertime. So the solar roof is kind of give or take. And also if you park in the garage or you park in a garage at work, it's not gonna be really worth it, but it is kind of cool in theory to kind of get that. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, the comfort factor because this car, for a car that is supposedly supposed to be an economy compact car, the new Prius has gotten really refined. The ride quality is excellent. The seats are also very comfortable. I love the soft tech seats of this car. Uh, I love how quiet it is as well. I mean, when you drive it in EV mode, there's no noise. There's very little road noise, very little wind noise. Um, the engine, however, when it does come on, isn't as noisy as it could be. Previous generations of the Prius with the smaller 1.8 were just far noisier. Toyota's done a better job at silencing the engine when you do have it running in hybrid mode. But again, in EV mode here, it just has the electric motor whirring noise and it just feels like you're driving an all electric car. And then in terms of the efficiency, in my week's worth of testing, I put a good amount of miles on this car, including several highway trips. Uh, on the highway, this thing easily got 52 miles to the gallon in hybrid mode. Uh, that's when I switched it to hybrid mode. It has some charge in the battery pack. 52 miles to the gallon in pure hybrid mode is just it's astonishing. Now, in the city, um, where hybrids are more efficient, I was able to get around 55 miles to the gallon. That's pretty similar to what I got in the regular Prius. Keep in mind, the Prime is heavier by about 300 pounds thanks to the traction battery. But because of the slippery shape of the Prius, it's very aerodynamic, it's also very light. Uh, and in terms of electric only uh, efficiency, in this mode, when I have it in, in EV mode, this car was getting roughly 3.6 miles per kilowatt. That's excellent. Anything over anything over three miles is pretty efficient. So it doesn't really surprise me that you know this car is very efficient. In my actual real world testing of the electric only range, I was able to do uh, around 48 miles on a full charge. So that's about 10 more than what the EPA rates it as. Even though this car was only showing me 35 on a full charge, when I actually drove it around town, mixture of city, town, and like highway, a little bit of highway, mostly city, it was doing around 40 miles of range. Now on the highway, that number did drop to around 35 miles of range. So again, highway driving is less efficient for electric only, but it's more efficient for city driving. So those are excellent numbers, even better than what you're going to get in the RAV4 Prime. You also saw how quick this car is, how comfortable it is in terms of the space and visibility. It certainly uh, offers a good amount of space, although the digital camera rear view mirror is definitely a must because that view out of the rear isn't great. But overall, as a daily driver, just living with this Prius Prime. It's definitely the ultimate Prius. And for those of you who are apprehensive about going fully electric, the Prius Prime is kind of that perfect middle ground because it effectively blends uh, a full electric experience with the hybrid experience to give you that efficiency so you don't have that range anxiety when you guys are going on those longer trips. So after spending a full week with the 2023 Toyota Prius Prime, I must admit guys, the enthusiast in me wants to hate this car. The Prius has always been kind of like the automotive equivalent of crunchy granola or maybe even a pair of Crocs, an ugly kind of boring greeny tree hugger car. However, for 2023, Toyota has seriously made it difficult to hate on this car. As you guys saw, it is now finally quick. Zero to 60 in six and a half seconds is gonna smoke a lot of sporty sport compact vehicles out there and embarrass a lot of other uh, uh, high performance, you know, 
faster SUVs out there on the market in your Prius. In terms of efficiency, real world driving range around 45 to 50 miles is seriously impressive, along with highway driving range, if you guys put it in hybrid mode of over 450 miles is also very impressive considering the fact that this has a small 10 and a half gallon gas tank, really. Uh, in terms of the driving dynamics, also the Prius, while it's not, I wouldn't say sporty in the way that a Mazda Miata is, this is now competent and sporty like a sporty sedan with quick steering, a reasonably tuned suspension, quiet and comfortable ride, a quiet interior. And really the only downside with the new Prius is the smaller interior. Obviously, if you guys are coming from the old Prius, the reduced headroom, the reduced legroom, the reduced cargo capacity is a downside. However, if you need all of that, Toyota will happily sell you a vehicle like a Camry hybrid, a RAV4 hybrid, a Corolla Cross hybrid. The Corolla Cross has the same powertrain as this vehicle minus the plug-in portion. and they essentially will get similar efficiency, although the Prius is definitely a car that is going to continue to stand out. And I imagine it's going to be difficult to get your hands on one of these because while they are already on sale, I am just now starting to see them uh, showing up in the actual real world. I suspect Toyota dealers are also doing their part to make this less attainable by marking them up, which is a sad thing. But again, Toyota only expects to sell around 35,000 of these in its first model year. Now they, they claim that the, they can adjust that depending on demand. Um, Toyota Toyota last year only managed, or in 2021, they only managed to sell around 34,000 Priuses. I suspect in their first year, they're probably going to do double that sales if they can actually build the car. The Prius Prime, I suspect, will probably make up for around 25% of the actual sales mix. We'll have to wait and see as this vehicle continues to be out on sale. Uh, but really, uh, for me, if you're looking at the Prius, if you don't need all-wheel drive, this model is going to be the ultimate version because it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. And it also gives it to you at a price that is reasonable, a price increase that is reasonable. Because at a starting price of $32,350 for the base SE version with 44 miles of range and 220 horsepower, this is only around $4,900 more versus a Prius LE, so the non-plug-in hybrid version, which I think is worth every penny. Stepping it up to this XSE, premium trim is going to cost you at least $39,000. I highly recommend at least going for the XSE to get, you know, some of the nicer features in the interior, the bigger 19 inch wheels, the better tech features. My tester here with the solar roof, which I'm still not entirely sure is worth the option, especially if you guys live in an area that doesn't get a lot of sun right now. It just happens to be really freaking hot out here, but at least, hey, we're getting some charge back into the battery while I'm standing here doing this conclusion. Uh, all in, my tester here is around $42,500 with destination. The color is a free charge. So again, it is definitely expensive now, but this still undercuts the average new car transaction price at the top end by around $5,000. And keep in mind, you can get into a Prius a Prime XSE for around $35,000 if you can keep some of the options in check. So kind of keep that in mind. Compared to its main rival, the Kia Nero PHEV, the Prius Prime is a little bit uh, more expensive at the higher end, but I think this car is worth it for the additional power, the additional range, the additional style, and the sportier driving dynamics. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 Toyota Prius Prime. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on facebook and as always guys please keep subscribing to the redline reviews youtube channel for all the latest reviews thank you so much for watching i'll catch you all in the next video